Welcome back everybody. We're gonna make some wild rice today. And I don't know if you guys have ever had real wild rice. It's not like that stuff that you buy in the store and it says long grain and wild rice like Uncle Ben's or whatever they call that now. Um, you know, it's, it's actually real wild rice. <clears throat> and I'll put a link to the website where I got this. It's actually, it's grown in Minnesota and it's harvested by Native Americans. That's why it's called Native Harvest. And this is actually, can you see it? So if you go online and you look and it shows that black stuff, that's not actually our wild rice. That might be wild rice from like Asia, but it's not this. This is amazing. The very first time I had wild rice was at an 18th century event <clears throat> with friends of ours and she made it and I was like, oh my God, it's incredible. It's got like a nutty flavor and, and I've read that all of them taste different. So it depends on where you buy it because it grows wild in the lakes and streams and things up in like this is from Minnesota and some in Canada and I don't, maybe like I think Idaho and there's a couple of states where it grows here in the United States. But it all depends on what is in that lake with what it tastes like and the natives up there who harvest it they actually can taste where it came from, which I think is pretty cool. So we're gonna make some wild rice and what goes better with rice and chicken? So we're gonna bake some chicken. We're gonna, we buttered this baking dish and you could use olive oil. You could spray it with cooking spray or whatever, wh whatever you want. And I'm gonna take, I know you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, these guys eat onions all the time. <laughs> but I like onions and I, I, I just think that, Putting this in here, and this will hopefully get us some good flavor on the bottom of the pan. So I'm just gonna layer those in there like that, no certain order, and leave them together in pieces. And I'm gonna season my chicken. This is gonna be pretty easy breezy. We're not doing a lot to this. In here, I have um, some garlic, pepper, salt, and onion powder, and just basic seasoning. And I'm gonna sprinkle this on this chicken. I dried, I patted this chicken dry. And I have left the skin on this. By all means, if you want to take the skin off, you could. I didn't, because I think the skin helps keep the chicken moist. If you don't want to eat the skin, granted, you're gonna lose all of your color. But if you, if you don't want to eat the skin, I would suggest taking it off after you cook it, because that skin has a certain amount of fat in it. Now, if you're on a low fat diet, I guess that would be a reason to take it off, but I think it, it helps keep the, I know it helps keep the chicken moist. So we're gonna leave it on ours. I'm just gonna take these and put these in here. And I'm not gonna put my two breast pieces next to each other. I'm gonna stagger those so it kind of heats evenly. We're just gonna set these in here. So we got two drumsticks, two thighs, and two breasts. And I got the skin side up on all of them. This one didn't have as much skin, but he'll be all right too. Maybe give him a little more sprinkle. I actually used a garlic pepper that I've been using for years and it's getting more difficult to find, but it's McCormick um, California blend garlic pepper. And it's excellent. I buy it on Amazon in a big thing and because it's cheaper that way. But it has a, an excellent garlic flavor. If I don't use fresh garlic, this is what I use. Okay, no, okay so we have three cups of water in this pot and uh, just about a teaspoon of salt. This is my wild rice. It's one cup of rice and I rinsed it three times. And the first time you're going to notice that the water is pretty cloudy. Might even smell a little like tea or grass or something, but it is actually, wild rice from here is actually a grass seed. It's not actually in the rice, actual rice family. But anyway, so we're gonna take a cup of the wild rice and, and mix it in with three cups of water, and this water is cold. And we're just gonna turn this on and bring it to a boil. And then we'll reduce it here in a little bit. But while we do that, we're gonna make up some onions and some mushrooms to go along in with this rice when it's done. 
we have in here about three tablespoons of butter. And I took the lid back off that wild rice because I'm going to let it boil without the lid on and then put the lid on and move it back to our simmer burner and let it simmer. And it only takes about maybe 20, 25 minutes once it's boiling. So we're going to melt this butter in here and we're going to add our onions. And then just after a little while, we'll add our mushrooms. Now I am going to put a little bit of salt in here, about half of what I'm going to use. So I'm only going to put in about, not quite, about a quarter of a teaspoon because we're going to add another quarter when we put the mushrooms in. Oh, we are getting ready to put our chicken in the oven. We're preheating it to 400 degrees and we're going to put that chicken in there here when we get up to temperature. You could take these onions and you could throw them in that water and cook it with the rice if you wanted to. But I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't made up my mind. If I'm going to take these onions and those mushrooms and just add them to the rice when it's done, or if I'm going to take the onions and the mushrooms and this butter in here and add a little cream and make a cream sauce to go over the top of the baked chicken and the rice. So, boy, too bad you can't tell me what you want to see and how you want it instead. <laughs> <laughs> My vote's for the sauce. But it's great this time of year if you've got some wild onions and some wild garlic and or like some ramps, what we call ramps. They're called something else. Wild leeks, maybe? Um, there's another thing, too. Like, I want to say rampart, but I know that's not it. But, um... We just call them ramps around here, and they are really good this time of year. Okay, our skillet's getting hot, and our onions are about halfway done. They're starting to look a little translucent. Some of these small pieces are actually browning on the edges. So we're going to throw our mushrooms in here. And this is just a one-pound little pack of mushrooms. Baby Bellas, but it doesn't matter any kind of mushrooms, this would be excellent with morels. Oh. And I'm going to turn this heat down a little bit. What isn't excellent with morels? Yeah. And we're just going to let these mushrooms go until they start to cook down, and then we'll probably add a little cream and cook it down into a sauce. I just think that would be good. We're going to put the rest of our salt in here. That's probably a little better than a quarter, since we're going to add some cream. Gino already made up my mind which way we were going. <laughs> <laughs> What's better than a creamy mushroom onion sauce like a gravy for rice and chicken? Oh, oh yeah. That's right. But I want to add our cream to this before our mushrooms are totally done because number one, I want them to cook in that cream and flavor the cream with their juices. Oh, we're up to temperature. But, hold on, let's put those in there. All right, we're up to temperature, and we're going to put this chicken in here. Sorry, I didn't mean to get my arm in front of you. And we're going to let that bake at 400 degrees for about a half an hour. And then we're going to turn it down. So anyway, I'm thinking also about putting the cream in and letting the mushrooms and the onions cook in the cream a little bit, just because of the fact that I wouldn't need to add any flour because it would get thick all on its own. So I think we're going to do it that way. I made this at one of our events one time um, with, with the onions and the mushrooms, and they actually were morels because I had had morels at the time. And it was just unbelievably excellent, but I just mixed them in with the rice, and it was very good. Okay, you guys, I had turned this off because we were about to the point that we wanted to be. Look at all that good juice in there from those mushrooms mm -hmm. and that butter and onion. And we're going to bring this back up to temperature. We're going to dump our cream in here, and we're going to make our sauce. And if we need to heat this back up, we can always heat it back up. Our chicken's only got about another... 
25 minutes to go and it'll be done. I've got about four ounces of cream here and I think I'm gonna probably need another two or so. We're gonna go ahead and stir that in there. Oh baby. And we didn't do anything in here to actually deglaze the pan, so we don't have any goodness. We have plenty <laughs> of goodness, but nothing to actually deglaze. No super caramelized goodness. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start cooking this. And the reason why I turned it off earlier was because we were far enough along because these mushrooms and onions are still going to cook when we cook down this cream into our sauce. Who can taste it? Oh man, okay. I can taste it. Oh, earlier I had mentioned doing this with morels. Let me tell you a little thing about morels. These are, these mushrooms are fine. Like the white cat mushrooms and the uh, portobello mushrooms that you buy in the store, you can eat raw. We all know that. However, if you try to eat a wild mushroom raw, you are going to get sicker than I don't know what. So if you do it with morels, you need to take those morels and you need to cook them well first and then put them in the pan <laughs> and don't forget to rinse them several times before you cook them definitely I made that mistake once i still have a little of our seasoning from the chicken left over and i'm gonna put just a little in here because i don't have any garlic in there and i just think that's really gonna bring out the flavor of that wild rice and those mushrooms Turn our heat down on our skillet a little bit. We're getting a little hot. We don't want to scorch the cream. And you could stop this at whatever thickness you want. It, you, can, you can cook this cream down until it's, until it's really thick, or you can turn it off when it's still a little on the thin side. That is all up to you and how you want your sauce. We're going to get ours kind of just in the middle. Okay, we are still cooking because this is a rock crock in Pampered Chef, I think. And it retains heat, kind of like cast iron does. But we're off the, we already turned the heat off. If you can see in here, see how this one is kind of curled back? You want to take them, when, when that starts to happen, you're pretty well done. And this, and, and your liquid should be pretty well absorbed. And if you can see, we pretty well are. You don't want to let it go too long or see there, right there, that one on the bottom. See that one? Can you see that? How that's curled? This one right here? That, that, you don't want them all to be like that. You want them to just be cooked and tender. They get mushy if you let them go too long. So this is done. And we're not finishing our sauce yet until our chicken is almost finished. After the chicken's been in the oven at 400 degrees for a half an hour, we're going to turn it down to 350, and we're going to let it go probably about another 15 minutes, maybe 20. And I might actually base the top of them with a little bit of melted butter, maybe just put a little pat of butter on top of the pieces and then put it on broil for a couple of minutes. But we're going to go ahead and cover this rice up and let it sit here. And it'll stay warm. You know what? I might leave that off since it's still cooking. Let's set it off yeah, until it cools it down a little bit. A until it cools down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to cool this down and we're going to stop cooking here for a minute. But I got about another two ounces of cream. We're going to dump that in there. And we are almost ready to turn our oven down to 350. And we're going to take a peek at the chicken when we do. It has it has picked up some goodness. You can see the color mm -hmm. of the cream's changing. That's probably mm -hmm. the, 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 mushroom, and the mushroom. Mushroom yeah. juice, yeah, and a little bit of browning that was on those onions. All right. Let's take a peek at our chicken, guys. Oh, this smells excellent, those onions in there. The smell is amazing. It's looking really good. I'm going to get some butter and I'm going to put a couple pats of butter on top of there. All right. We're just going to kind of rub the top of these with some butter. The skin is starting to get crispy already, which is awesome.
And I'm not going to mess with those drumsticks because they got a lot of fat on the skin, really. And I think that's good. Look at this, guys. Oh, baby. We cooked this for another, well, 15 to 20 minutes. I need another pot holder. Can we grab me a mitt out of there? Sure. 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how big your chicken is. And we turned it on broil just for the last couple of minutes because I really wanted to get that skin nice and crispy. The onions smell amazing, you guys. <laughs> the aromas here are unbelievable. Mmm. Mm -mm. That wild rice and mushroom sauce is unbelievable. It's really good on the steamed asparagus as well. Chicken skin is nice and crispy. Let's dig a piece of this out and see what it looks like. Look at that juice. Oh, look at that chicken. Mmm. Unbelievable. Give this one a try, guys. This is absolutely phenomenal. Hey, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. It helps the channel. And God bless you all. We'll see you next time.